When did you feel like, okay, I'm going to be a pro? What, what year in college, and high school? Like, when did it really click to, to, in your yeah. mind, like, okay, I could do this shit for a real living? That's a good question. I think, you know, being an, like an underdog, I always had that underdog mentality, so I never really, like, counted my chickens, you know? So, like, I had a great junior year. There was some talk about should I leave, you know? It, wasn't, it was much less common in those days, especially for, you know, a Canadian kid at a mid-major. Like, well, we have, you know, like, it, we need to see more of him kind of thing. So I stayed, but I think, like, I started to realize, I think I played in the World Championships after my sophomore year and, had a, and started for Canada. I must have been 19, 20 years old and had a good tournament. There was a lot of NBA scouts there. And that kind of started the buzz to where I was like, okay, this really could happen. And then had a good junior year, thought about coming out, didn't. And then had a, maybe not quite as good a senior year, just, you know, dynamics of the team or facing a lot of attention from the other teams, but still had a great year, went in the first round. It's somewhere between like the summer after my sophomore year um, and, and being drafted, you know, there, it was building, you know, it was building it. But again, when I got to the league and when I was a first round pick, you have a three year guarantee, like there's some security there. I still came in the league as an underdog. Like I have to prove myself every day. Like there's mm -hmm. no, like there's no, I've made it, you know, there's no like, um, you know, I belong. I mean, there was no entitlement. It was like, I, I felt like I had the appropriate fear that I have to prove this every day or I could every be out. Day. You know, I could be out. So it's just, it, it's just different, you know, different time, you know, and you know, like back then you're a rookie, you got treated like a rookie, you know, you got treated by a rookie, oh, by man. a teammate. They, 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 they just made a big trade though with McDice, McLeod, all of them that just came back, right? When you got there, yeah. Steve? Uh, at some point, I can't remember if they were there. Uh, yeah, I think that was right. You're right. My rookie year, right? Because, because that so. was the reason why they had one draft pick with me the next year because they had made those trades to get those right, guys. Right, right. Yeah, right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was... And... It was... Yeah, go on. Now, uh, and to keep it real, like, like to touch on what you're saying, a, a spade is a spade. You're a small little white dude playing against GP, J Kid, mm. all these guards. Like, we're not gonna, you know, we're gonna bust this white dude's ass. And that's how, mm. I mean, that talk is still prevalent till today. So I can only imagine back then, like, you know, you're coming from a mid major trying to make your name, but you're nice. But like, you know, I could only picture GP saying, I'm not gonna let this white dude bust my ass. You know yeah. what I mean? So every, <laughs> every single night, you were going to war with solidified yeah. Hall of Fame point guards. You know, back then it wasn't so much about social media and all that, but you didn't want your friends back home to know that this little white boy just, right. you know, turned you Busted over. Your so, ass. Right? So <laughs> right. There, there was yeah. a little extra sometimes, but, um, you know, that makes you, that, <laughs> but that makes you tougher, right? It makes you more competitive. Absolutely. And, That's what I'm and saying. It's part of that grind. It makes you, you know, just thicker skin and, and to be able to survive. Because it is. It's a, in the NBA, like, there's... You know, a big part of it is just survival, right? Like, is you, if you yeah. if you're not if you're not ready to play, you can get embarrassed. If you get embarrassed too many times, you're gone, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, it, it, you know, it, maybe it is a little different now. The play, the players now, you're right. They're so athletic, so they're, but they're a little more specialists. You know, they um, in a sense, uh, it's just a different. They grow up differently, and and they're amazing. I love it. Mm -hmm. um, but it was a different time, and you. You definitely just had to. You had to really uh, earn your stripes with your teammates. You know, the referees around the league. Uh, you do today. You do today. This is not like I love this generation. So this is this is just giving you a picture of both. Um, but mm -hmm. back then it was like, I mean, I remember after every practice, like AC Green was one of my vets, and he'd just like kick every ball all over the gym, the stadium, wherever <laughs> we were, and be like, "Go, go get him, Rook," and was, you know all that type of stuff. So. Uh, it's just a different era, and uh, and uh, I loved it. Though. It was it was great to look back on all those memories, especially now that that's a bygone era. It's crazy, man. Right? Like, yeah. I don't feel old, but like it's it's a bygone era. No, we had uh, we had Jay, uh, ja, ja Morant on last mm. week, and he was talking to us about music, and he called Jay Z old school. And me and Jack kind of looked at ourselves like, fuck. <laughs> he, he, I mean, he is. You know what I mean? Yeah, he is. These, these kids are, is. these kids are twenty, twenty one years old. Like. Yeah. It, he, he's old school and it's just like yeah. damn that went by fast you know it went by we fast, speak man. to like we used to come in and there used to be a pecking order no matter how good you were because there was vets you know right. what i mean so mm -hmm. to be talented lottery pick whatever to crack that lineup it was yeah. different 
Right. You know, no matter how good you were, someone on your team or a vet was going to have a problem with you trying to crack that lineup. But right. it also, like you said, it made us tougher, it made us stronger. And then you had those vets that would put your arm around you and, 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 oh. and, and, and school you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Keep you from making the same mistakes. And I really don't see that anymore from a standpoint of just the league is so young. Mm -hmm. So your, yeah, vet, yeah. your, your vet is yeah. a couple years older than you now, which is yeah. crazy. Yeah. I mean, the way the salary cap is too, you know, like a vet minimum for a guy who's played 12 years over a talented, um, you know, explosive kid that you want to take a chance on like financially, like, you know, it's, it's much more manageable with the cap and all that stuff. So the model doesn't really support, you know, vets in that respect anymore. Right. Um, you know, there's 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 very few like Jared Dudleys around anymore. Whereas like mm -hmm. there was there was a there was two or three on every team when I came in. Every the team, you know, right? Um, you know, the vets, good the model room, kind of good vets. yeah. The mo and the, it was the model of the salary cap and all that stuff supported that. And now it doesn't. It's not not for better or for worse. You know, I think it's a shame that we don't have room for both, but. Um, you know, that was definitely a benefit in that respect of having vets that could show you the ropes, that could, you know, teach you, share with you, keep you in line. That was, you know, that, that's got to be a little bit more difficult for young players today because every team's got like four mm -hmm. or five 19, 20, 21 year olds. The 96 draft, legendary. Mm -hmm. Allen Iverson went one, Camby went two, Sharif Abdul Rahim three, Marbury four, Ray Allen five, Antoine Walker six, Kerry Kittles eight, Kobe 13, Paige Stoyakovich 14, you land 15. What do you remember about that draft and God, I mean, how talented that class was? I mean, it was one of the best times of my life, you know, actually getting drafted and kind of like, like I talked about the Hall of Fame, putting a bow on it. Uh, it's like the draft kind of justified all the hours, you know, like getting drafted in the first round, like really, you know, was the reward, was that moment of like, okay, all that time, all that energy and hustle and all the tough days, the days you didn't want to do it, you know, this is the reward. And so it was a special, special time. And then, you know, at the time I knew it was a talented draft for sure, but you don't know in context, like where everyone's going to go on, what kind of careers right. they're going to have. What's going to happen. Mm -hmm. You have no idea. So like, there was no way you could have predicted it, but um, but you, but I knew there was a lot of personalities. There was a lot of talent, and uh, and looking back, it's it's incredible to see the careers that so many of my classmates had. First time around in Phoenix, who who mm. were some of your vets? Yeah, my vets were like Rex Chapman, Danny Manning. Oh, gee, Rex. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, sat next to Rex on the plane. Hilarious. Uh, taught me a lot, uh, still mm. friends to this day. Danny Manning was a great vet, unbelievable player. Like, I mean, he'd already done his ACL. Back then, it wasn't as, it wasn't like ACLs now where you come back, because Danny was like a 6'10 point forward who was really quick. He lost he a little so bit of that. He has so much game. He has People so much game. People don't understand that, man. No, and, and when he tore his ACL, like today, you come back fully, maybe even better sometimes. Stronger, and it wasn't, right. It wasn't like that, and so... You know, he, he lost a little bit of quickness and, a, and I think a lot of, like, mobility, durability in that knee, but he could play so smart, 6'10", could post, could point, play the point, could pass, read, react, cut. You know, so I learned a lot from those vets. Kevin Johnson, uh, Hot Rod. Mm. You know, Hot Rod Williams, rest in peace. Wayman Tisdale, rest in peace. You know, guys that mm -hmm. were just, you know, good pros, uh, supportive, taught me a lot. And so, you know, it was... Uh, I was fortunate, you know. I, I came in behind Kevin. We traded for Jason Kidd, so I had Jason and Kevin. So I, I also got to play behind two great, great point guards, um, and that, and I learned a, a tremendous amount from those guys. This life was all I ever wanted. I'm not leaving. Not yet. I was hoping you'd say that. We gotta hit the streets, make some money. People like us must destroy people like him. Buckle up. Get Showtime free at Showtime.com.